Hello, in this video is going to be hopefully a fairly quick video on how to control Google Chrome across your Active Directory. So setting stuff like the home page and other options such as whether people can use incognito mode, uh, whether they can sign into Google Chrome and, and other things like that. So uh, what you need to do is you need to already be on a network which is on a domain controller type network and with computers joined to the Active Directory domain. Uh, if you haven't got that or you don't particularly know how to do that or you're just starting out, check out the rest of this series of videos on basic Active Directory administration. So I'm going to go to Google and Google for Google Chrome MSI because I know that that's where the uh, admin files come from or ADMX files. And I'm going to download the bundle. So download the Chrome bundle. I may actually already have this file on my system because of the earlier videos I was recording. And I'm going to copy that over to the server. So it's not a great idea to browse the internet on your server, so I did the browsing on this desktop computer. I'm going to copy that file over to the server. And now we can go over to the server. If I go into the zip file, go into the configuration section and ADMX is what we want for modern servers and this list of files I'm going to put into a policy definitions folder so I'm going to go start and then run backslash backslash and then the name of my domain so in this case it's bobswidgets.internal there's a sysvol folder which is where all the group policies um, are kept and startup scripts and then going to go into the policies folder and in my instance I don't already have a folder called policy definitions if you do already have a policy definitions folder that's good um, make sure you take a backup of that folder before you make any changes because trying to back out of any uh, or putting some corrupt ADMX files or some incompatible ADMX files into that folder is a right pain. So make sure if you do already have one that you take a, uh, a sorry if you do already have a policy definitions folder in here that you do take a backup of it first. In my case, it's a brand new domain. There's not one there, so I'm going to go new folder policy definitions. I'm going to go into that folder. So we're now into uh, the domain, sysvol, the domain again, policies, and then policy definitions. I'm going to go back over to the Google zip file, highlight all of these files, and drag them into the policy definitions folder and wait for them to extract. So those have extracted. So the other thing you really need to do, if you did not previously have a policy definitions folder, is to bring across the policy definitions which are stored on your server's hard disk. If you leave it like this with just the Google policies there, if you go into group policy and edit any of your policies and go uh, for example policies administrative templates, suddenly you're like well where are all the settings? I only have Google settings and that's because Windows is now looking in your domain's sysvol folder for group policies and not on your server's hard disk. Um, the sysvol folder has its advantages where if you have multiple domain controllers you only have to have one set of, or keep one set of ADMX files up to date. So I suggest moving your policy definitions into, or not moving, but copying them into the sysvol folder or sysvol policies, policy definitions folder, because it makes management easier in the future. So I need to go into my C drive windows, look for the policy definitions folder in here as well, and then copy all of these files across as well. 
So copy those into the sysvol policy definitions folder. And now if I go back into the group policy management and just pick any of these, so policies, we should now have more than just the Google ones back in there. We should have all the, the Microsoft ones again. So there we go. Just be aware of that as well. So I'm now going to, for my users, create a new group policy called Google Chrome Settings and to edit that policy going to go to the in the users section policies administrative templates and let's see what we can do with Google so you can either have default settings which the users can override or you may have um, cause to just have default settings which the users would not be able to change so you may want a, an intranet page as your home page um, which the users can't change you could have it so that the default settings um, you enforce a setting, but they will be able to change it. Um, I generally wouldn't recommend just doing the defaults where the users can override it, because across the domain you quite often want uh, everything to be the same across all computers and you don't want users fiddling with stuff. So Google Chrome and filter the options and see whether we can do start page, maybe, it might be what they call it. There we go. So in the Google, Google Chrome startup pages and new tabs page section. So actions on startup, enabled, open a list of URLs. And then presumably if we go digging down and get rid of the filter, so that was in Google, Google Chrome startup pages. So filter off, uh, Google, Google Chrome, startup pages. So open a list of URLs, list of URLs to open on startup. Enabled. And then in here, news.bbc.co.uk. Let's also do, say, Google Calendar. And then there was another one which is quite interesting called the new tab page and you can configure what it does whether it comes up with a standard Google new tab page or goes to a URL when they open a new tab but there'll be a lot of stuff in here uh, which is useful to set in a corporate environment so we'd be able to turn off uh, private browsing that will be in here somewhere uh, again quite often Use the filter setting, just go to all settings, right click filter options and do private. And Google, Google Chrome, there's nothing in that section which is useful. What do they call it? Oh, it's incognito in Chrome, isn't it? Google, Google Chrome, and inc incognito mode availability. Enable, enabled as in we want to enable enforcing the settings so don't be um, confused here where you go oh, okay I want to disable it that's not disabling it um, that is disabling the enforcement of that policy so we want to enable enforcement of the policy and then in this drop down box we want to go incognito mode is disabled and the same for guest mode which uh, a lot of people don't seem to know about in Google Chrome. Guest mode is similar to incognito mode, but it keeps a history for the duration of that browsing session. So if you wanted to know what you went to 10 minutes ago, guest mode is useful because it still keeps that history. But when you close the guest window or you log out as the guest, it loses it, similar to as if it was incognito mode. So if this policy is set to false, which I presume means disabled, so this one compared to the other one where you had enabled and disabled which then had a drop down box in this one it is actually an enable or a disable which is which makes the difference just to uh, be very confusing and have two different types there so if this policy is set to false google chrome will not allow guest profiles and that's probably useful 
a useful starting point. So if we go back to Bob's computer, at the moment, without updating the policy, I can bring up an incognito window. I can also click on the user and open up a guest window. Also, if I load Google Chrome from scratch, the home page will probably be just there, the default Google home page. So now let's do a group policy update. Or, as I've said in a lot of these videos, just wait 20 minutes, it'll probably apply itself automatically. There we go, that's updated. Let's load Chrome again. We should have, yep, yeah, our home pages of BBC News and the second tab of Google's calendar. So that's that part of the group policy has worked. I'll try and open an incognito mode window. The option, which was the third option down, is now missing. And the option, which was the third option from the bottom to load guest mode, has also disappeared. So remember, you can do lots of powerful stuff with that. You can control it so that the users can't turn on Google Sync in the browser, turn off password remembering, um, enable or disable flash on pages, enable or disable the um, microphone, all sorts of stuff. So uh, it's really powerful controls you've got over what users can do in Chrome if you install these Chrome uh, ADMX extensions. So if I do, uh, for example, Let's do uh, location, because you may want to turn off geolocation. So Google, Google Chrome, content settings, I expect. Default geolocation setting. Do not allow any sites to track the user's physical location. So again, if you um, are privacy minded or you're in an industry where it's not great for websites to be tracking where your users are, then you may want to set that. And there we go. So that's basically how to install the Google Chrome ADMX files, or this would apply to any program which will give you an ADMX file, um, and how to put those centrally on your domain, and how to configure them. Hopefully it's been useful to you. Uh, if it has, please, it would be really helpful to me if you could subscribe to my channel. You don't need to have new video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. And uh, if this has been interesting, check out the other videos in this series of basic Active Directory administration.